super massive black holes millions to billions of times the mass of our sun lie at the heart of most galaxies. And astronomers are eager to know how these behemoths came to be. While they think most resulted from at least one merger between two smaller supermassive black holes, scientists lack the observations that could give insight, since only one pair of supermassive black holes on the way to a merger had been found. Stay tuned to find out everything you need to know. Researchers observing a supermassive black hole report signs that it has a closely orbiting companion. Locked in an epic cosmic waltz 9 billion light years away, two supermassive black holes called the Binary 2 appear to be orbiting around each other every two years. The giant two bodies each have masses that are hundreds of millions of times larger than that of our Sun, and the objects are separated by a distance roughly 50 times that which separates our Sun and Pluto. If the team is correct, the diameter of the binary's orbit is 10 to 100 times smaller than the only other known supermassive binary. When the pair merge in roughly 10,000 years, the titanic collision is expected to shake space and time itself, sending gravitational waves across the universe. That might seem like a long time, but it would take a total of about 100 million years for black holes of this size to begin orbiting one another and finally come together. So, this pair is more than 99% of the way to a collision. Joseph Lazio and Michelle Vallisneri at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California provided insight into how supermassive black holes behave in a binary system and how to interpret the radio data. Evidence that this supermassive black hole may have a companion comes from observations by radio telescopes on Earth. Black holes don't emit light, but their gravity can gather disks of hot gas around them and eject some of that material into space. These jets can stretch across for millions of light years. A jet pointed toward Earth appears far brighter than a jet pointed away from Earth. Astronomers call supermassive black holes with jets oriented towards Earth blazars, and a blazar named PKS2131021 is at the heart of this recent paper. Located about 9 billion light years away from Earth, PKS2131021 is one of 1,800 blazars that a group of researchers at Caltech in Pasadena has been monitoring with the Owens Valley Radio Observatory in Northern California for 13 years as part of a general study of blazar behavior. The Caltech-led team of astronomers has discovered evidence of this scenario taking place within a fiercely energetic object known as a quasar. Quasars are active cores of galaxies in which a supermassive black hole is siphoning material from a disk encircling it. In some quasars, the supermassive black hole creates a jet that shoots out at near the speed of light. The quasar observed in the new study, PKS2131021, belongs to a subclass of quasars called blazars, in which the jet is pointing toward the Earth. Astronomers already knew quasars could possess two orbiting supermassive black holes but finding direct evidence for this has proved difficult. But this particular blazar exhibits a strange behavior. Its brightness shows regular ups and downs as predictably as the ticking of a clock. Researchers now think this regular variation is the result of a second black hole tugging on the first as they orbit each other about every two years. Each of the two black holes in PKS2131021 is estimated to be a few hundred million times the mass of our sun. To confirm the finding, scientists will try to detect gravitational waves, ripples in space, coming from the system. The first detection of gravitational waves from black hole binaries was announced in 2016. Reporting in the Astrophysical Journal Letters, the researchers argue that PKS2131021 is now the second known candidate for a pair of supermassive black holes caught in the act of merging. Within a quasar called OJ287, the first candidate pair orbit each other at greater distances, circling every nine years versus the two years it takes for the PKS2131021 pair to complete an orbit. The telltale evidence came from radio observations of PKS2131021 that span 45 years. According to the study, a powerful jet emanating from one of the two black holes within PKS2131021 is shifting back and forth due to the pair's orbital motion. This causes periodic changes in the quasar's radio light brightness. The team had to look beyond the decade of data from the Owens Valley Observatory to confirm that the oscillations weren't random or the cause of a temporary effect around the black hole. After learning that the two other radio telescopes had also studied the system, 
the University of Michigan Radio Observatory, 1980 to 2012, and the Haystack Observatory, 1975 to 1983. They dug into the additional data and found that it matched predictions for how the Blazar's brightness should change over time. Five different observatories registered these oscillations, including Caltech's Owens Valley Radio Observatory, OVRO, the University of Michigan Radio Astronomy Observatory, UMRAO, MIT's Haystack Observatory, the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, NRAO, Metsahobi Radio Observatory in Finland, and NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, WISE, space satellite. The combination of the radio data yields a nearly perfect sinusoidal light curve unlike anything observed from quasars before. Ripples in Space and Time Most, if not all, galaxies possess monstrous black holes at their cores, including our own Milky Way galaxy. When galaxies merge, their black holes sink to the middle of the newly formed galaxy and eventually join together to form an even more massive black hole. As the black holes spiral toward each other, they increasingly disturb the fabric of space and time, sending out gravitational waves, which were first predicted by Albert Einstein more than 100 years ago. The National Science Foundation's LIGO Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, which is managed jointly by Caltech and MIT, detects gravitational waves from pairs of black holes up to dozens of times the mass of our sun. However, the supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies have millions to billions of times as much mass as our sun and give off lower frequencies of gravitational waves than those detected by LIGO. In the future, pulsar timing arrays, which consist of an array of pulsing dead stars precisely monitored by radio telescopes, should be able to detect the gravitational waves from supermassive black holes of this heft. The upcoming Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, or LISA, mission would detect merging black holes whose masses are 1,000 to 10 million times greater than the mass of our Sun. So far, no gravitational waves have been registered from any of these heavier sources, but PKS-2131-021 provides the most promising target yet. In the meantime, light waves are the best option to detect merging supermassive black holes. The first such candidate, OJ-287, also exhibits periodic radio light variations. These fluctuations are more irregular and not sinusoidal, but they suggest the black holes orbit each other every nine years. The black holes within the new quasar PKS-2131-021 orbit each other every two years and are 2,000 astronomical units apart, about 50 times the distance between our Sun and Pluto, or 10 to 100 times closer than the pair in OJ-287. Revealing the 45-year light curve Tony Reedhead, who is a Robinson Professor of Astronomy, Emeritus says the discoveries unfolded like a good detective novel, beginning in 2008 when he and colleagues began using the 40-meter telescope at OVRO to study how black holes convert material they feed on into relativistic jets, or jets traveling at speeds up to 99.98% that of light. They had been monitoring the brightness of more than 1,000 blazars for this purpose when, in 2020, they noticed a unique case. PKS-2131 was varying periodically and sinusoidally, Reedhead said. That means that there is a pattern we can trace continuously over time. The question, he says, then became how long has this sine wave pattern been going on? The research team then went through archival radio data to look for past peaks in the light curves that matched predictions based on the more recent OVRO observations. First, data from the NRAO's Very Long Baseline Array and UMRAO revealed a peak from 2005 that matched predictions. The UMRAO data further showed no sinusoidal signal for 20 years before that time, until as far back as 1981 when another predicted peak was observed. Sandra O'Neill, lead author of the new study and an undergraduate student at Caltech, began working with Reedhead and the study's second author, Sebastian Kilman, a postdoc at the University of Crete and former staff scientist at Caltech as part of Caltech's Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship (SURF) program. O'Neill began college as a chemistry major but picked up the astronomy project because she wanted to stay active during the pandemic. I realized I was much more excited about this than anything else I had worked on, she says. With the project back on the table, Reed had searched through the literature and found that the Haystack Observatory had made radio observations of PKS-2131-021 between 1975 and 1983. These data revealed another peak matching their predictions, occurring in 1976. 
Reedhead compares the system of the jet moving back and forth to a ticking clock, where each cycle or period of the sine wave corresponds to the two-year orbit of the black holes, though the observed cycle is actually five years due to light being stretched by the expansion of the universe. This ticking was first seen in 1976 and it continued for eight years before disappearing for 20 years, likely due to changes in the fueling of the black hole. The ticking has now been back for 17 years. Let us know what you think about these two supermassive black holes by leaving a comment in the section below. Thanks!